Virtus Praetors. Crowds of troops gathered below, huddled not so long ago, now standing bold and screaming their encouragement to the skies, to their saviour, to the custodian. He had so many names, both in reality and in fiction. For the forces of the Imperium all had a different name for him across the tens of miles of the front. To each patch, each unit, formation or even squad, a different ownership. He was theirs, because he had saved them. He had shown them the way. The most common epithet, the one that all knew, all could at least passingly agree on. He was the Eagle of the Dawn. Now some had said that this was actually the type of bike he rode, but it fit. It fit so well. For each morning, he proved it again and again. But it was not always so. Once, only weeks ago now, the men and women of the Basin de Florence had feared the dawn. They had feared it. For the battle had dragged on for months, the deadlock a thing of churning mud, barrage lines, barbed wire and swamps. It was hell. And yet, each morning they had come, taunting those below with their daytime sorties. Xenos scum, Eldar. They held this world, but not for much longer. The Andromatus Crusade had come. Hundreds of thousands of men, tanks, guns, and all the material of war were landed. Yet the Eldar did not run. They stood. Nobody understood why. None. But it was a terrible battle. A terrible war. The basin was their last major holdout. Shields stacked upon shields. They held out well. Fought like tigers. But they were never getting out of the basin alive. They knew this, so they fought all the harder. Hammering the lines with their eldritch lightning, Laz blasted erupted like suns. Scatterguns, firing constant sprays, dissecting men as they charged their lines. We dug, and they released some form of dreadnought on us. It was butchery down there. But dawn was when it was worst, always at dawn because their nimble jet bikes took to the air like a flock of birds, and they tore into us from above, flying high, flying low, darting down like hawks, their shuriken cannons chewed up our bodies and even armor like they were paper. It was horrific. For weeks they did this, every morning. Weeks. As the sun reached its zenith, they disappeared back to their fortifications until the next day like a flock of ravens homing to roost. We were dropped off early, you see, the fleet moving on to larger targets in the system. We had smashed the Eldar across the planet. Not here, though. In the basin, we had not gained ground in all the time they were away. At last, he came. The Eagle of the Dawn. Rumours differ on the how of the matter. Some say he was the bodyguard of the overall commander. Some say he was overseeing the campaign himself. But all agree that one day he strode to the battlements, looked down to the basin, and saw our plight. He saw that the Xenos thought they ruled the skies. They slew us with impunity. And on that day, he said, No more! On the next dawn it happened, so few witnessed it, so it's all that can be done to patch together bits and pieces. It was dawn. If you were outside, you were dead. But not that day. For as the sun came up, the Eldar came out of their city and took to the skies like a ghastly cloud. But the first rays of light lit up a solitary figure hovering over our lines. Our lines. 
golden fire blazed off his burnished automite in the red light. Alone, he just positioned himself above our stand at our center and ascended. He was on a golden jet bike, thrice the girth and longer than any Eldar vehicle. He looked like a knight on a powerful steed. His banners unfurled on his bike's rear, his lance upturned, pennant attached. But he was but one man. With the Eldar bikes whined, his purred like a herd of sleeping grocks. Powerful, but all alone. And they saw him. The cloud moved from the city towards us, but then, halfway almost, it slowed and undulated, forever in motion but not advancing. One rider came down from the flock like a manifestation of vengeance. It then dipped its nose towards the custodian rider, who did likewise. They burst into speeds it was difficult to follow, streaking towards each other what seemed to be dead on. But it was certainly that for one of them. The discs of the Eldar Shuriken cannon passed harmlessly through the air where the custodian should have been, if he had the reflexes of a human. But he was a custodian. His steed barked at the Elder Knight and was more accurate. The Eldar bike was blown to smithereens and the rider beheaded by the bolt of fire. The Eagle of Dawn turned and sped down our lines. A victory dash of sorts. A challenge for the Eldar to come. Which they did. But another came individually, but with far more purpose. This one had a long lance, as did the custodian. His steed was blue and white, his armor ornamented and his banners proud. He swept down towards the eagle, and it seemed he had to drop on him. The custodian turned on the spot over so little space, and hammered his engine hard, climbing up to take the new challenger, a bona fide Eldar champion. But again, the Emperor was watching. For the custodian pulled an angle that the Eldar misjudged, his spear going straight through the bottom of the jet bike and through the chest of the Eldar Knight. The Eldar was hit so hard he was impaled, hanging from the long lance of the custodian until he whipped his hand and the body fell into pieces downward. This blatant mastery then brought three of the same type of Eldar Knights, his Conroy, we all assumed, his allies. But the custodian shot two from their bikes, and when their own fire struck him dead on, their bladed shots just bounced clean off his armor, his bike, scuffing perhaps, but nothing penetrated. This shock left the rider open for another lance strike, taking off his left arm at the shoulder. The Eldar bike spiraled downwards and seconds later became a ball of burning wreckage. Then all hell broke loose. For the flight of birds all flew at the eagle at once. The eagle then dropped down below to the ground and sped just above the heads of those who had begun to emerge from cover to sea. Word had gotten out. He sped down the trenches and emplacements, dragging an unending sea of their bikes behind him, straight into the guns of those they had tormented for weeks. We could never strike them, because we could never see where they were coming from, where they were going. But not that day. The eagle led them to us, so we went crazy. It was a moment of pure revenge. Pure. For we did not just shoot them with our last guns. Our heavy weapons, no. They were so thick above us that some took to throwing grenades up in the air as the custodian passed. Plumes of fire and shrapnel erupting in the midst of the chasing elder, so smug, so sure of themselves, so superior. Now we had the time of our lives. Some of them dropped down from the explosions, you see. They were swiftly dragged down into the trenches by the men and women they had been preying upon. But it became too much for them. The eagle had now shot upwards and hit down, shot up, hit down, hunting the elder and crashing through three or four of their wind riders at each dive, leaving none alive. The combined change in fortunes, the challenge in the air, the newly renewed vigor of attack from the ground, forced the Xenos from the skies and back to roosting inside the city. He had done it. He had killed less than a tenth of the enemy who had burned that day. Less than a tenth. But he had made it all possible. 
he had shown the way. And now, each morning he sits there, in his golden armor atop his steed, hovering above our lines, the sunlight as dazzling from him now as ever it was the first dawn. And each day, the Elder come out to fight. But now, it is a real fight. For each morning, he is but one golden gem above a sea of courageous men and women of the Imperium, standing tall, ready to face whatever the universe can throw at us. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and units of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace. There is only time for war. And today, we shall be taking a look at the best pilots in the entire Imperium of Man. Not of two flyers, however, but the much-missed and rarely seen jet bikes of the Imperium. Of course, I can only be speaking of the glorious Virtus Praetors and their Dawn Eagle steeds. Now the Imperium has all but lost the ability to generate or maintain the legendary jet bikes of the Custodian Guard, the 10,000. And previously they were available across all of the different wings of the Legio Astartes. But here, alone in all of the Imperium, except for the Charger of the Skies ridden by Samael of the Dark Angels, are the glories of the Crusade Age technology still alive, much to the detriment of the enemies of the Emperor and his Imperium. But let us push on. And so, as usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, Virtus Praetors Squads of Virtus Praetors swoop into battle astride powerful Dawn Eagle jet bikes. Veteran warriors who have seen battle on a hundred worlds, these custodians know the true value of speed. Not simply to bring the enemy to battle, but to direct their might precisely where and when it is needed most. Wherever they see their comrades hardest pressed, there the Virtus Praetors strike like golden lightning to bosser them. These airborne warriors act as the eyes and ears of their shield companions, soaring over the battlefield and voxing word of the enemy's movements. Their auto senses are optimized for this task, boasting suites of data augers, optical auspicators, and multispectral motion oracles that allow them to detect and track even hidden foes. With a squadron of sharp-eyed Virtus Praetor circling overhead, a shield captain can rest assured the enemy stands little chance of catching him unawares. Each Virtus Praetor is a master combatant who has already honed his superhuman skills amongst the ranks of the Custodian Guard. They are expert marksmen, able to place perfect kill shots, even while screaming at breakneck pace through tangled ruins or dense forests. Their coast cotter's prowess is no less exceptional. A Virtus Praetor can open the throat of a heavily armored foe in a single pass. They can analyze even the most chaotic conflict in a heartbeat, reacting with incredible speed to evade obstacles and run down their foes, processing battlefield developments with breathtaking rapidity. The exceptional skill of the Virtus Praetor is augmented by their superlative war gear. As well as being protected by Auramite armor, these warriors wield enormous interceptor lances, taller end on end than an ogrin and perfectly weighted. These fearsome weapons boast adamantium blades wreathed in disruptor fields. Virtus Praetors are masters of hit and run strikes, driving their lances clean through their precisely chosen targets before ripping them clear again as they speed past. The result is as devastatingly effective as it is explosively gory. The greatest assets at the Virtus Praetor's disposal, however, are their mounts. The Dawn Eagle jet bike is an incredible vehicle. 
a Crusade-era relic wrought in oramite and adamantium. These bikes are almost as large as light fighter craft and, while they are still grav skimmers, can deliver a near supersonic turn of speed. Their hulls are phenomenally durable, allowing their riders to slam through walls and enemy warriors without being unseated, and they react pugnaciously to the slightest touch of the controls, able to jink effortlessly through incoming fire. When armed with hurricane bolters, the Dawn Eagle can plough bloody furrows through enemy hordes. However, it is when equipped with salvo launchers that Virtus Praetors truly come into their own as lightning-fast tank hunters. They scream across the battlefield, rapidly outflanking and encircling the heaviest enemy vehicles before annihilating them with strafing runs of melter missiles. Even enemy aircraft are not safe, for by combining their fire, the Virtus Praetors are able to weave airborne webs of flak blasts into which hurtling enemy aircraft slam with terminal results. End quote. Now the Virtus Praetors are not the only custodies who can take to the skies, for the shield captains are also permitted to use these majestic lords of the skies, the Dawn Eagle jetbikes. But when they ride into combat surrounded by the Virtus Praetors, they are a sight to see. I have witnessed it myself, as a fellow club member had a plethora of them. And when we did my Tyranid invasion campaign, the Crunchening, it was they who would stand against all airborne adversaries. A good laugh, but also a magnificently swift match. For they are high in points cast, so few in models on the board, hence faster movement, firing and even melee rounds. Less time umming and ahhing over the placement, etc. So when I see a Custodes player, I know we are going to have a good fun time. Because it won't be quite so frantic when the clock starts to dribble away the last moments of sublime escapism. Throwing dice with a friend. And by thunder, they are good when used appropriately and in the right context. Now I would love to get just a few to plump out my army and give me more narrative scope. For I do love a narrative macho campaign, but I do fear that the painting may have to wait until I have done more of my other armies. <laughs> so thus I prevent myself from adding to my trove of unmade and unpainted and unplayed, what others dub their pile of shame with hopes for a clear schedule, whenever that will be possible. Restraint can be negotiated with oneself. Give it a try. But do remember, it's always supposed to be relaxing, so enjoy the decision of which men to paint first, which rules to learn, which book to read, or which YouTuber to listen to. But never tell yourself there is not enough time, that you are missing out. Because you are not. You are merely spoiled for choices in hobby activity. Meaning it will always remain fresh if you switch it up a bit. This is your mental bubble bath, there for you after long periods of hard work. So enjoy every second of it. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. I hope you have enjoyed this brief introduction to custodian Virtus Praetors. If so, then please consider liking and subscribing. If you do, then hit the notifications button, as I would not want you to miss out. If you see the worth in what we are doing, then do also consider joining our Patreon, or giving the video a share if that is beyond your present scope. It would be a great boon. And did you see the new Yagatai, the Great Khan? Did you? Chapter Master Valrak said that there might be one on a bike in the new year. Yummy. He's getting some white scars. <laughs> like he's not going to end up buying Sanguinius and some blood angels to have a full siege of terror loyalist army. Only a matter of time. Called it. Mark my words. I'd not put a groat against those odds. Now... No matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.